Good morning, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Sunday, the 24th of September, 2017. Obviously, the big story in the Atlantic continues to be Hurricane Maria. This is the 5 o'clock advisory package, and you can see the National Hurricane Center keeping the core, the eye, the center, pretty far to the east and south of the Outer Banks of North Carolina. But remember that the effects extend well away from this area and it's possible that tropical storm and even hurricane force winds will buffet the Outer Banks here, making this a direct impact event. And that's what I have been talking about all along when we were thinking a few days ago and the track looked like it was going to come up like this and basically bring only surf and swells and, you know, sort of indirect effects. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a lovely sinus infection this morning, but... That, that will pass. Um, now it's looking like it could get close enough to bring at least tropical storm force winds. I think this wind field here will expand even more, and even the hurricane force winds could expand more as well. And this will come up and bring probably 24 to 36 hours of gale force winds, very high seas, ocean overwash. In other words, this will be a direct impact to the outer banks and People live there. There's an economy out there. You know, that counts. Now, will the eye make landfall? Probably not, but that was not the point. The point was, as I said yesterday afternoon, that this was not a done deal, that it would turn up and then just head out without any effects whatsoever, and the westward shifts did commence, and now we're looking at the possibility of at least tropical storm conditions. So if you look at the satellite picture, you can tell... Uh, Maria, a very large, sprawling hurricane, and uh, fairly well organized this morning. It's got a round appearance to the central dense overcast, and we can see that here on the colorized infrared loop. Um, not too much evidence of wind shear just yet. And it's interesting to note the eye, which is clearly visible. Well, let me just get back over here to the still image because that will help me illustrate my point the best. So the eye is clearly visible right here, and this right here is 73 degrees uh, west longitude right there. So it's almost crossing 73 degrees, and then there's 74, and of course Hatteras is just a little bit past 75 up here, well off the top of the, the shot here. This will move with time, and the Outer Banks will become in view better. So what is this? Why does this matter? Okay, well, um, each degree of latitude or longitude here between these two is roughly 60 miles, uh, 60 nautical miles, and so two degrees would be about 120 miles, and then it's just a little bit farther over to the Outer Banks, uh, Cape Hatteras, Rodanthe, uh, farther up, of course. So that's not a whole heck of a lot of distance. So if this crawls up and crosses over. 73 degrees longitude on its way north and gets closer to 74 then we get closer to where the hurricane force winds can affect the outer banks so this is where it's really going to start to matter that every quarter to half a degree of longitude this way west that this gains as it moves north is going to be critical at this point in terms of how much impact the wind will have on the Outer Banks. And let's just look at it another way. Let's assume that the shape and the size of this central dense overcast remains basically the same over the next 96 hours. And let's just assume that the eye makes it to at least um, 73 and a half degrees about up here, let's say, all right, and then further north from there. Well, you can clearly see if you move everything over, you know, you get the western edge of this nastiness right over the Outer Banks of North Carolina. So that's the point here. Heavy rain, strong northeast to north winds, and then eventually north-northwest, piling up the Pamlico Sound, piling up the Atlantic against the Outer Banks, uh, that this is going to be a problem. And that's the main point that I was illustrating throughout the last few days. And there's still a chance that this could wobble more towards the west and actually make a landfall. In fact, if we look at the 0Z GFS from last night, watch what happens. It comes up, and we've seen this jog 
right towards the end of the four-day period here, where it lurches towards the Outer Banks and the core comes really, really close. Clearly, you can see that. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit more. <clears throat> so you see that little lurch right there at the end, and the core sits just off of Cape Hatteras and Rodanthe. All right, so that's the uh, last frame from the 0Z run. And then if we look at the 6Z run, which, of course, was just a few hours later that this was initialized, it's quite a bit farther offshore. There's a little bit of a lurch there towards the end, but you don't have it coming right back at the Outer Banks. It's a little bit more north and east. So I don't know if this is the beginning of uh, a very positive sign for the Outer Banks, because that would keep a lot of the worst conditions well away, really, uh, or if this is just one of those off runs. We just don't know. Um, if we look at the various ensembles, there's a few of them that do turn it back, and that's just a big bunch of noise down there if we zoom in. You know, there's a few of the ensemble members from the GFS, the 6Z run, that uh, do turn it up closer to 75 degrees longitude. And that's important. Again, if it gets to 75, the center, then you're going to have hurricane force winds over the Outer Banks. And then if you look at the actual plots here where you reduce the noise a little bit and you follow this one here, the AEMI, which is the mean or the average of all of these, the blue is the average there, and the blue takes it up, um, you know, far enough offshore. Again, if the eye were about this large, <clears throat> you could have hurricane force gust over there. Gusts, you know, 75, 80 miles per hour with sustained winds, 45 to 55, that wouldn't surprise me. But it's going to really depend on how large the wind field gets. Usually as these turn north and get farther away from the tropics, they spread out. So... There you go. And uh, the other item, you know, we're going to have these rough seas, the swells and the rip currents increasing for parts of the East Coast once again. So Maria is not a non-event. Will it make landfall? The jury's still out on that. I doubt it. But it's not a non-zero chance either. All right. So that's what I know this morning. No major changes, which we didn't expect. And maybe a ray of hope there that it would be farther offshore to reduce the chance of higher impacts from what we're already going to have. We're already going to have low to medium, I would say, on the Outer Banks, and we were, you know, now we'd see if it's going to be medium to high at some point, and I just can't answer that quite yet. There's still enough uncertainty in the four-day model guidance that enough can change either east or west that we just don't know for sure yet, all right? So I'll do another video discussion this evening sometime. And uh, we'll see what the afternoon model runs, et cetera, show. And uh, then we will go from there. I'm planning on heading up to Rodanthe and Kitty Hawk in that area tomorrow evening and um, setting up some equipment and seeing what we get. Uh, I'll talk more about that uh, tomorrow morning in the morning update. All right. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. I'm Mark Sutter for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have another video discussion for you early this evening.